And it seems like the the best marriages, really, when you look at them, are marriages that are uh, as equally yoked as possible. Yeah. Um, there's there's compatibility, of course, uh, but it's it's the ability to talk to one another as equals and to work as equals toward whatever the goal is. Right? Welcome, everyone, to Renew Your Mind, podcast number 142. With us today, we have Senior Pastor Paul Gruenberg. We have Associate Pastor Jeremy Teru, who's also our Director of Youth and Family. We have Retired Pastor Barry Sweet. And we have guest, uh, forgot your name, Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> Jordan Kettlewell. Sure. <laughs> Thank Still. you. Still, yeah. Still, yeah. He's our praise, <laughs> our praise band leader at our contemporary service. And myself, Dana Hall, is a moderator. Um, we are in a series about the Old Testament. And we wanted to pick up where we left off last week and... We kind of had a pre-discussion, just like we always do before we started this podcast. And we want to start with a couple of major things um, that we need to understand before we get into the Old Testament. One being culture and another one being covenant. What is it? Yada, yada. So which one do we want to talk about first? Well, I think we always start at the beginning, right? Yes. Once upon a time. Yes. Uh, yes. As the uh, fairy tales go. And once upon a time, God created humanity, uh, starting with Adam and Eve, to be in relationship with himself. Mm-hmm. That was and has always been the most important aspect of the Bible. It shows God's desire for us and for us to be in that relationship. And when we are in that relationship with God, things go well. Mm-hmm. So with Adam and Eve, at, in the beginning, God created them. The only part of creation that was created in God's image. Mm-hmm. So we're God's image bearers. Mm-hmm. And Adam and Eve were created to be compatible and um, worked together. Uh, they had a harmonious relationship. You know, one of the interesting things about uh, just Adam and Eve, they never had an argument. Well, at least the Bible does <laughs> <laughs> okay, maybe that's even a darker black box. But anyway, uh, once once they disobeyed God, that's mm-hmm. when sin came into the world. And and we could even go back further, talking about how um, Satan or Lucifer, one of the God's most beautiful angels, began to want to be worshipped. He wanted to be like God, which created really the first brokenness. Mm-hmm. And then it was Satan who. Uh, tempted Eve or Adam and Eve. I mean, I believe Adam was standing right next to her when the temptation was happening. And in that moment of disobedience of eating that fruit from the tree, which God said, this is the only one thing I don't want you to do. Um, And they did it because they thought they would become like God. Mm -hmm. And in doing so, there were some uh, curses that uh, ensued. And in Genesis chapter three, verses verse 15, it's the curse I would put uh, to Satan. I will put enmity between you and the woman, which would become Jesus. That's the first uh, real reference to Jesus as our savior. Can you say that again? I mean, just repeat what you just said. So in breaking the covenant with God and mm-hmm. disobeying God, they were then cursed. Mm-hmm. And and we'll get to that in the covenant information. And in that, it says, uh, well, so God said to the serpent, cursed are you above all livestock and all the wild animals. You will crawl on your belly and you will eat dust all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman. And the woman, this is the first reference to Jesus because Jesus is going to come and will uh, battle Satan and and win. Mm-hmm. So that's that enmity between you and between your offspring and hers. And then it says, he will crush your head. Oh, oh I, I totally missed. Um, and then to the woman, 
I will greatly increase your pains in childbearing. With pain, you will give birth to children. It's like uh, eternal, um, what is it, the block that they put in uh, uh, the spine epidural. epidural for women to have no pain in childbirth. Mm. Man, that's what it was supposed to be like. Right. Yeah. <laughs> careful. <laughs> careful. Yeah. 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 careful. <laughs> but then it says, here's the, here's the brokenness now in the relationship between the male and the female, which mm-hmm. didn't exist before. Your desire, he's saying, God's saying to Eve, your desire will be for your husband and he will rule over you. And in that he will rule over you, that began the patriarchal system uh, or the culture in which people would begin to live. Mm -hmm. In other words, the man would be, for lack of better words, I hate to say it this way, but in charge. Mm -hmm. Um, Everything will flow through a man. So the most important person to any woman will first be her father because her father will take care of her. And then the next important person to a woman will be her husband. And the husband will take care of her. Mm -hmm. And when the husband dies, the most important person becomes to a woman is her firstborn son Mm -hmm. who will then take care of her. So a woman was always, and and it sounds really harsh in our culture today, but a woman would become, would be always dependent on a man. whether it's her father, her husband, or her firstborn son. Which led women to be treated like property. It led to other things, right. Right, but I think one of the things, as we talked about uh, earlier, um, is just that this was not God's original plan. Correct. And so sometimes God gets gets blamed Mm -hmm. for the patriarchal system and that he wants men to be ruling over women and and this unequal relationship. Um, that's not the case at all. That's the result of sin. Mm-hmm. That's the result of their choice to disobey God, and this is what happened as a result. And God mourns that as much as many of us do. It mm-hmm. creates brokenness. Mm-hmm. And it seems like the the best marriages, really, when you look at them, are marriages that are uh, as equally yoked as possible. Yeah. Um, there's there's compatibility, of course, Uh but it's it's the ability to talk to one another as equals and to work as equals toward whatever the goal is, right? But we oftentimes see in our culture today, uh, or at least in past cultures, the woman was more the nurturer of the family. The man was the one who uh, went out and uh, brought home the money, uh, was the worker, outside worker. And uh, today, it's more. it just seems more equally yoked as we um, work together to raise our families. You know, men have become more nurturing. Women have become um, uh, more, for lack of better words, out in the workplace or able to be a little bit more independent than in the past, a lot more independent than in the past. And they, they fit together. It seems to me they fit together, but there's still, there's always a kind of a struggle there in any marriage for how we're going to move forward, you know, especially as issues come up. Which that kind of goes back to uh, what we spoke about in the last podcast of why pay attention to the Old Testament. Um, And, you know, Barry, to your point, um, there was a covenant in place Mm -hmm. and they, you know, Adam and Eve lived in paradise. It was supposed to be perfect. There was no... Mm -hmm someone's in charge. The only person in charge was God. It was perfectly equal. And then there was sin, which broke the covenant right? and just descended the world into madness. So this is why we need to pay attention to the Old Testament, because we look at nowadays, like you're saying, Pastor, it is becoming more equal. While we're looking at the Bible in its entirety and all of human history is thousands of years of trying to get to where we're supposed to be in the first place, where God made us in the beginning. Um, and it's it's just the story of us trying to build back to that, try to try to fix what we broke, and try to rely on God to help us fix what we broke. Um, and it's you know it's it's not it's not a, like you were saying, not a patriarchy that God set up. It's something that we set up by, for lack of better terms, we messed everything up, you know. And then we're stuck. So we were stuck with this this uneven relationship, this this unequal society. Um, and we're constantly, and we still fall and fail, and we might not do it the right ways, but we're still constantly trying to build back to that 
harmony and paradise. That's what everybody wants. Um, and, you know, we are seeing that in, in good marriages, like strong, successful marriages, you see more equality. Mm-hmm. Um, and I would venture to say, like, there's a misconception in society that Christian marriages, you know, it's everybody wants to say, oh, it's the handmaid's tale. You know, the wife has to wear a skirt every day and submit to her husband and the husband rules the rules the roost. No, you see strong Christian marriages and they're equal because they understand because you get a better recognize understanding. recognize the strength. I mean, each couple's different. So right. one or the other is going to have certain strengths. And so they go with that. Yeah. And, and understand the, the teaching that also comes and I, I can't quote chapter and verse, but um, you know, in scripture, it does say, you know, wife submit to your husband and husbands love your wives as I love the church. Ephesians mm-hmm. 3, yeah. 21, yeah. Right, 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 right into four. People misunderstand that. They read the wife submit to your husbands and go, oh, that's it. Okay. <laughs> Don't read the rest. Pa- patriarchy. Yeah. When, if you, if you look mm-hmm. at it, uh, husbands love your wives as I love the church. That's even more submitting. That's even more yeah. self-sacrificial. It's as Christ loved the church and gave himself for right. her. Right, meaning give right. everything mm-hmm. of yourself. So Christ pouring out his life on the cross is how husbands are supposed to love their wives. That's yeah. <laughs> so, the, so that the, comes out of the, the model of, of the original Adam and Eve. Yeah, but yes. I, I think we have to be careful we don't move into this evolutionary process that we're fixing everything. Right. Um, because we're not. We're right. still sinful. We're still and, broken. And the world's yeah. still a mess. Yes. And, and we're all we're all concerned about where things are going mm-hmm. and how things are are or aren't at this point. And so there's that sense of, you know, I think there's been some improvement in marriages on some level, but there's also a lot of marriages out there. That are broken. I mean, the divorce rate is. Yeah. And the divorce rate among Christians is just exactly the same as everybody else. I would say probably not. I think the divorce rate among Christians is a little less. I mean, if you're truly committed to Christ, if you are um, living for Christ, both the male and the female, those will be more successful. I think the the numbers of people who call themselves Christians but aren't okay. aren't committed to Christ, those are the marriages that tend to break up along with those who are outside of Christ. And that's what I was trying to say is right. not so much that we're trying to – well, we are. We as people, we're try, we always try to fix our own sure, problems. Sure, absolutely. I'm talking society as a whole. Um, and that's kind of the comparison I was trying to draw was like, everybody's trying to get back to that paradise. Mm-hmm. Um, but if you look at, I wonder if that's built into us. It, well, it has yeah. to be. Yeah. yeah. That's that, that's that area in our lives where we want, or that place in our heart that only God can fill perfect God-shaped love, mm-hmm. yeah. uh, yeah. perfect love, perfect, uh, obedience. Um, yeah. again, remember, uh, love to God is obedience. That's our memory verse. Right. Whoever has my commands and loves me, he is the one, no, whoever has my commands and obeys me, he is the one who loves me. Mm-hmm. I kind of cut you off, though. I didn't mean to. Oh, no, that's just, I, that, that's what I was, uh, you, you summed it up a little better, but that's what I was trying to get to, was that we as a society, Christian or non-Christian, are trying to get to some sort of paradise type of a relationship, type of a world. Um, but then you look deeper into, um, you know, truly like Bible following, Christ following marriages, and you see more equality. True. Um, mm-hmm. uh, because because of the, you know, wife, uh, wives submit to your husbands, husbands love your wives as I love the church. Yeah. Right. You but know, you see, you see a little bit, I think uh, you're seeing more of that equal playing ground because I guess the larger point I'm trying to get to is mm-hmm. we've been growing since the beginning. Mm-hmm. We wrecked everything right off the bat. And as a society, We've been just trying to grow and get better. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah it, it does say, and this is the the problem with uh, chapters and verses, is the verse right before wives submit to your husbands is in chapter three at the end, which says submit to one another out of reverence for mm-hmm. Christ. Right. And so if we were to submit to one another out of reverence for Christ, I mean, just, just the world would be a, a lot better place. Mm-hmm. Marriages would be in a lot better place. Yeah. And I think it's important to point out too, as Jordan's saying, um, equality in the marriage. Each, the man and woman are of equal value. But that doesn't mean that their roles are the same. Equal ability. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. God made a man in his image in a certain way. God made women in his image too. 
but men are not the same as women. They reflect God's image in different ways. Mm-hmm. And, and together. And together they make more of a whole. And so it's important that men are living into the image of God in them. And, and the roles, I mean, there are certain roles that men are more suited for than women. And that's not an offensive thing. That's just true. Well, like just being, different. Yeah. Like being a father. A father provides things to children that a mother can't fully do mm-hmm. because the father's a man in the image of God. And likewise, the mother provides things to children mm-hmm. that a man can't fully do right. because he's not a woman. And when the, when those two come together, you have a more full picture mm-hmm. of what God intends. And going back to what Pastor Paul said a little while ago, God's designed for the family, mm-hmm. man and woman, children, mm-hmm. because it's more of a full, complete um, design that God gives us. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to step all over this. I mean, when you think about what a father provides for his son, an example of what a, a, a man should be, um, what a father provides for his daughter, mm, yeah, you know, is absolutely. this is what a woman should be. Mm. And, and then the same thing for a woman, she's going to provide a different aspect of, oh, you're so handsome, son, you know, that type of thing. And for a woman, for her daughter, will provide other uh, aspects of what it means to be a woman. Yeah. So it, the complete family, the mm-hmm. father and the mother together raising daughters and, and sons, it's a whole. Yeah. It, when you take one part out of it, there's going to be some loss. When my dad died, and I, my mom and I had this conversation a, a week or so ago, When my dad died, she said, but you found some guys and mostly coaches because I was involved in athletics who were father figures to you. And that was important for Mm -hmm. me. You need that, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Yeah, right. And, you know, my heart goes out to to single moms and single dads and who are doing, you know, all that they can, doing a wonderful job with their kids. But I think most of them would tell you if you're a single mom, there's certain things that my son needs that I just can't give him Mm -hmm. fully. He right. needs a male role model. He needs to see mm-hmm. what a man is supposed to be, you know. Yeah. So and there's that other perspective where, you know, the man's supposed to rule over the woman and woman's supposed to the image is almost cower. The desire will be for your husband and he will rule, rule over, over you. you. And that when I'm gonna say Christian couples that that play into the the scripture inappropriately. Mm is that they're enforcing or they're building a relationship based on brokenness, not God's intent. Mm -hmm. And I'm I'm not sure we send that message in the church very well. That's a good point. Um, Mm -hmm. Is that you're basing your relationship on the result of sin, not God's intent for this relationship. Mm -hmm. And I I just think that needs to be stated that um, man ruling over woman— was not God's plan. That wasn't the original right. intent. Um, so I know. Uh, let's let's go back and define what a covenant is because we forgot to do that in the beginning, and we are drawing to the end of this podcast. But can you quickly define what a covenant is and what are some of the major ones we should keep in mind? So a covenant is a relationship between two persons. Mm-hmm. In its very basic understanding, it could be a covenant between two uh, different families. It could be a relationship uh, between two different cultures, and it certainly is a relationship between humanity and God. Mm-hmm. So it's it's all about relationship, and then the two the two covenants are basically within the family there's there's covenants right yeah marriage marriage is a it's is one. a covenant mm-hmm. or a one mm-hmm. and then uh-huh. there are covenants between being a parent and child mm-hmm. so that's called uh, a kinship uh family covenants and so the the technical term is a fictive a fiction not two family members coming to be kin Mm-hmm. So a fictive kinship, and then within those uh, covenants that come together that are not the family members coming together, there are uh, two. One is a uh, parity treaty, which is where people will treat each other like 
uh, siblings or brothers. Mm -hmm. And then there's the suzerain vassal training uh, treaty, which it has uh, one person who's more powerful than another person. Okay. And we can talk more about that next week. Okay. And the way I've always looked at it is it's a relationship between people or groups that involves some kind of binding promise. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Yep. So it's not just a relationship, but it's a relationship with a binding some, there's promise. There's some kind of some agreement kind of there. there. There's a promise. Mm -hmm. When God's forming a covenant, you'll see him saying, as for me, I will do this. Yeah. If you, and, and if you do this, mm -hmm. kind okay. of. All right. Well, I think um, we'll wrap it up there, and then we'll pick it back up next week, um, and we'll describe some of the different um, aspects of covenants aspects and mm -hmm. what we see in the old testament so thanks everyone for joining us uh, we come to you from the first united methodist church of gaylord and we're located at 215 south center street and we have on sundays a traditional uh, 9 a.m service and we have a contemporary service at 10 45 a.m we'd love to have you join us in person um, however, if you can't come in person, you can view us via Facebook Live or YouTube. And if you have any questions at all, just Google us or you can call the office at 989-732-5380. Thanks again, everyone. Thank you.